Hey student, in this lesson we are going to cover the topic which is pulmonary volumes and capacities. So the pulmonary volume and the capacities majorly talk about the amount of air which can be held by our lung. So the pulmonary volumes it refers to the maximum capacity of our lungs, right? Now, if we talk about these two, first we are going to see the pulmonary volume. So the pulmonary volume, it like I just said, it means the capacity of our lungs. It is a it is an amount, it is a quantity basically which can be measured. Wherein when we talk about the pulmonary capacity, it is simply the inferred value. So now the pulmonary value, it is divided into four types. Firstly, we will see that the physical capacity of lungs, it can be measured by spirometer. So I said that the physical capacity of lungs, it can be measured by the spirometer. So we can measure the various capacities or the volume of air which can be held by the lungs while, you know, performing some incomplete or complete process. Let's see what are these complete and incomplete processes. So first type is the tidal volume which can also be called as TV. Okay. Now the tidal volume or the TV it is the amount of air which is inspired or expired during the normal breathing. So while we are breathing normally the amount of air which is moving in or out from our lungs is called the tidal volume. The general value of the tidal volume is somewhat around 500 ml in man. Now, it is important to note that the whole inspired air, it does not reach up to the lungs. Uh, the portion of air which remains in the respiratory tract is called the anatomical dead space. So this anatomical dead space is the amount of the air which remains in the respiratory tract and it does not reach up to the lungs. Its value is around 150 ml. So 150 ml is the amount of air which remains in the respiratory tract and it does not reach up to the lungs. Moving forward, we will see some more types of the pulmonary volumes. So let's observe them. Okay, so the next type is the inspiratory reserve volume or simply IRV. So IRV or the inspiratory reserve volume is the maximum amount of air which can be inspired over the tidal volume by the deepest inspiration. Okay, so when we are inspiring, when we are taking in the air, the maximum amount of the air that we can take in is 3000 ml. So its value can be, you know, between 2500 to 3000 ml. And we can say that this is the maximum amount of air that we can inspire by the deepest inspiration. So this is the inspiratory reserve volume. Next is the expiratory reserve volume or simply the ERV. Now ERV is just opposite to the IRV, which means that it is the amount of air which is expired over the tidal volume by most forceful expiration. Which means that when you expire most forcefully, the, more, the maximum amount of air that you can expire or you can expel out is the expiratory reserve volume and its value is around 1000 ml. So we can say that the expiratory reserve volume is entirely opposite to the inspiratory reserve volume. Last, it is the residual volume or the RV. Now, as the name suggests, it is the residual volume, which means that it is the amount of air that remains inside the lungs even after the forceful ex expiration. So, even if we do the forceful expiration, there has to be some amount of air that remains inside our lungs and its value is around 1200 ml. So, we have seen the four volumes the pulmonary volumes and these four volumes, they basically define the capacity of our lungs. Moving forward, we will see the pulmonary capacities. So the pulmonary capacities, they are not measured, you know, like directly as we have seen the values of uh, these pulmonary volumes. Basically, the pulmonary capacities, they mainly talk about the, you know, combination of two or more types of 
pulmonary volumes so let's observe them now so the pulmonary capacities like i said it has you know been measured by the sum of pulmonary volumes it is again of four types the first one we see in here is the inspiratory capacity so the inspiratory capacity or ic it is the amount of air that one can inspire by maximum expansion of the lungs now this is what we call ic or the inspiratory capacity so now this inspiratory capacity it is the sum total of the inspiratory reserve volume and the tidal volume so like i said it is the maximum amount of air again right so it is the maximum amount of air that can be hold by the lungs by maximum distension or the expansion of one's lung so we see that ic or the inspiratory capacity is equal to the inspiratory reserve volume plus the tidal volume so we have seen that the value of irv is 3000 ml its maximum value is around 2500 to 3000 ml and the tidal volume is around 500 ml so the total capacity or the inspiratory capacity becomes 3500 ml so i repeat that the inspiratory capacity is the amount of air that can be held by the lungs by the maximum distension of one's lung moving forward let's observe some other values now second is the functional residual capacity or simply the frc now frc it is the amount of air that normally remains inside the lungs after expiration so after expiration the amount of air which remains inside the lungs is what we call the functional residual capacity so now the functional residual capacity it is the sum of the expiratory reserve volume and the res residual volume so the expiratory reserve volume its value was around 1000 ml and the reserve volume which remains in the lungs even after the forceful expiration is around 1200 ml so the functional residual capacity it becomes somewhat around 2200 it can lead up to 2500 ml so this is the second pulmonary capacity next we'll see the vital capacity or simply the vc so the vital capacity is the amount of air that can be expired by most forceful expiration so the amount of air that can be expired by most forceful expiration is the vital capacity it can be measured by combining the inspiratory reserve volume plus the expiratory reserve volume plus the tidal volume so if we remove all the you know air present inside the lung which is the sum of these three it becomes somewhat around 3000 ml plus 1000 ml plus 500 ml which gives you around 4500 ml so it can range from 4300 ml to 4800 ml so this was the vital capacity this is very very important term and it is very useful for you in the respects for exam as well the last is the total lung capacity or tlc quite a good name no so what is this this is the maximum amount of air that lungs can hold so no matter what the maximum amount of air that your lungs can hold is the total lung capacity so the total lung capacity is the sum of inspiratory reserve volume plus the tidal volume plus the expiratory reserve volume plus the residual volume so this is the total amount of air that your lung can hold right so it becomes like 3000 plus 500 plus 1000 plus 1200 So what is the total amount? Well, it is six thousand mL. So it can vary from fifty-seven hundred to six thousand mL. So guys, we have seen that there are two types of you know pulmonary uh, capacities or volume that we can talk about. The pulmonary volumes were pretty uh, you know specific, but while we talk about the pulmonary capacity, they are just the inferred volumes. 
now all these terms are very very important for you to remember and memorize so we have learned in this lesson that pulmonary capacity and the pulmonary volume it tells you about the total capacity or the volume of lungs and basically it is very important to understand this because this helps you in understanding that the the lungs can hold what amount of air in them so we have seen the different type of pulmonary volume and capacities in this lesson